Hello everybody, Batgirl Bullion here. Welcome to part two of my beginner's guide to investing in precious metals. So last week we uh, talked about things right from the very beginning, so we looked at what exactly precious metals are, what gold and silver are, why are they important, why are they valuable, and then we looked at the hows and whys about why you should be stacking and how you should be stacking along with budgets and things like that as well. So lots to think about in that first episode, so if you haven't seen it yet, please do go have a look. I think if you're a complete beginner, it's quite a good video to go and have a look. Uh, but today we're going to have another kind of preparation-y style video, but we're getting closer to the point where you might want to pull that trigger and buy some silver and gold. So uh, without further ado, let's jump into the first point I want to make. So the first point I want to talk about is basically just a bit more pre-planning. It's research, research and research some more. Uh, you know, the world of investing in precious metals is uh, certainly more volatile than having money sat in your bank account. So it's definitely worth making sure you know everything about the market that you can before you make these decisions. Um, you know, you're going to have to look at kind of the real basics and, you know, the most important thing to think about for any kind of investment is that you buy something at a certain price and then you sell it and hopefully you've made some money on it. And that is how you make money from investing in precious metals. It seems a very, very simple concept, but how you actually do that is very different and uh, very important to know ahead of time based on what you're investing in. Now you can see here, I've got a whole different variety of different things, and we'll talk about the different varieties and what might be best for you as the video goes on. But um, you know, knowing the market is so important. Knowing what ticks in the market is really good as well. You can look at all of the history and the past trends of what silver price, gold price have done, of what particular mints have done, what particular mints are good, uh, you know, bad, whatever they might be. Uh, different coins which are an option, and we'll talk about those as I said in a bit. But you know, there are so many different things out there. So it's important to research. Um, otherwise, you just might be floundering a little bit not knowing quite because it's a very very daunting subject and a very daunting market there's so many things out there um, and you know if you were going to go and invest a lot of money in say a house or some you know car, a car or whatever it is you were buying and you're spending a lot of money on you would research it thoroughly so there's no difference in my mind to doing something like this here you know know your stuff make sure that you go and have a look at what all the options are so how do you do that? Well, there's lots of different options. You can go uh, look at YouTube videos like this one. You can talk to uh, friends and family who might do this already. Uh, you could go on to forums. There's some really great forums out there. Obviously, the one that sponsors me is the Silver Forum, so make sure you go check them out. Uh, but you don't even have to be members of forums. You can just go read the different posts, read news articles, read um, investment articles, uh, things like that. Now, you don't necessarily have to become a complete investment guru and know every single thing about the world of precious metals, but any little information that you can get out of there from experienced seasoned stackers can't be a bad thing. So just make sure that you, um, you know, you just research as best as possible before you go and take the plunge. And also, don't be afraid to, you know, actually phone dealers up and ask them questions. If you're new and you've got lots of money to invest, uh, then make sure that you, you know, you get to know people who are going to be in. Uh, basically involved in your stacking, whether that's your local coin shop, whether that's uh, you know a dealer that you've seen online, um, that's a really important thing to do. But shop around, you know, as well. There are so many bullion dealers out there in the world, and uh, so many coin stores and coin shops. So make sure you you, you know you shop around, you get to know people, uh, know their reputation. Reputation is phenomenally important in this business. Uh, you know, it might be that they have a really fancy, flash website. Uh, they look really great, but actually they have pretty crap customer service, you know, if something goes wrong and you need to ring them up, you want somebody that's going to answer the phone straight away and sort out your problem. Um, so it's really important to, I think, you know, make sure that the, the person that you end up potentially buying from is a good egg rather than a bad egg. Um, so definitely ring people up, don't be afraid, you know, what's, what's the worst that's going to happen? They're going to they're gonna tell you to go away because you're not, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. So what? Who cares? But uh, most people are very, very friendly and very happy to help as well. So that's a really important thing. So research, research and research some more. So now we're going to move on and talk about the different types of gold and silver that you could invest in. So there are a lot of different options in the world of investing in precious metals. And uh, I'm using the term precious metals. That's going to encompass 
pretty much everything that is gold and silver. So that includes numismatics. It includes things like this, which is a um, you know expensive collectible numismatic coin uh, that's a Valkyrie. You know you can see that it's it's different to these kind of coins here. Uh, and there's a word that you're going to get used to me saying quite a lot, and that is the word premium. Now premium is basically going to come into play on nearly everything that you buy because that's just the nature of the market. Every item has a, uh, has a premium of some kind. Some are a lot smaller, some are a lot bigger. So as you can see, I've got a lot of different things. You know, you can get anything from um, bars, so you can have simple one ounce bars. There are actually smaller denominations of bars and coins as well, so you can get um, you know half ounce coins, half ounce bars. You can even get tenth ounce coins, uh, silver coins and things these days. So bars is one thing to think about. You've then got obviously kind of the world of coins and these are things that um, that governments will make or mint and uh, you know you've got your, you've got your time old classics of favourites of American Eagles uh, or you know you've got things like Britannias for the UK or Maple Leafs like I showed last week. So there's a whole host of different options there. Now some have different benefits over others. Often you'll find with these types of coins they are kind of at the cheaper end of the market in terms of their premiums. So in other words, the additional stuff that comes on them. It's just because they're so common and they're so well known in the world and they have their advantages. Now you can see here, I'm just handling them and I'm touching them with my hands. And that's because these are bought with the idea of just stacking behind their weight. So I bought them as one ounce coins. I bought them for a certain amount. I know how much that uh, has been. Uh, and then when I come to sell them, I'll make a certain amount of money on each one when the silver price has gone up. So these are very much linked to the kind of the market of how much value there is in the ounce of silver that they contain. Whereas things like these coins here, they're very, very special. They're very, very pretty. They come in a nice box, as you can see here, presentation cases and things like that. Uh, you know, whilst I'm handling this with my hands, this is because I'm going to be keeping these kind of for my retirement. So I'm not really looking to flip and sell these. Uh, but, you know, these will be... Uh, something that you'll want to keep in as pristine condition as possible. They are very, very pretty and they will have a high premium. So you'll have paid more than the weight of the silver for them. Uh, but the idea is that by the time that you come to sell them, they will have earned even more because they have a very, very low mintage. Um, now, they are a very risky investment. So these, I would say, are a very safe investment. You know, these are very easy to sell. People will want to buy these because they're very common and uh, they're very easy to sell at things like coin stores and you kind of know what you're going to get for them. If you took these to a, a coin store right now, you would be pretty sure you'd know what you're going to get for them. Whereas one of these coins, it would be very difficult and you have to find a specialist buyer, somebody who's interested in them, somebody who wants to buy something like that. So, you know, there are very, very many different options. You need to kind of ascertain in your mind what the various risk and rewards are. Uh, you know, there are things like uh, hand poured silver as well. So a shameless little piece of self-promotion, you know, things like this, which uh, I've made myself. Um, you know, if you're going to make silver yourself, it can be quite a good way of getting cheap silver if you can find, uh, you know, cheap silver shot and melt it down. Certainly if you're doing it enough in quantity, you can, um, you know, you can make some nice hand poured silver yourself and uh, it would be cheaper than if you went out and bought some yourself because hand poured silver, you've got to remember, has a premium. It's not easy to make. You need to have the equipment and the expertise to do it. Um, so, you know, having that facility is potentially good, but again, it's risk reward. It's more difficult to sell at the other end because it's not recognized. It's not necessarily something everybody knows. Uh, and it's also potentially not something that everybody knows the purity of, which is something that's important as well. So hopefully all of that kind of information will feed into um, all the previous points I've mentioned. You know, you're going to be looking at your budget. You're going to be looking at what might be best for you. You know, there are even things like this, which is kind of a middle ground coin where you've got coloured versions of certain coins. These will have a little bit of a premium over their non-coloured partners. Uh, and they have a sort of, you know, collector's market within a, within a, of themselves. But um, it's not necessarily as easy to sell those at the same price you bought them than perhaps the simple bullion coins. Uh, and graded coins as well, you know, there's a, I mean, there's so many different things, so many different options. So that's why it's important to research and know what the market is all about. And that is all going to feed into my last point, which I will go on to now. So the last point is exit strategy. Now exit strategy is really, really important because whether you're buying specialist numismatics, whether you're buying easy to buy and sell silver coins or bars or gold coins or specialist graded coins, once you actually make the decision to buy and you've pulled the trigger, money's left the bank account, that's it, the money has gone. 
you're not going to be able to get that money straight away back again unless you have an exit strategy, unless you have a place in your mind where you're going to sell these coins or bars or whatever it is on to. And that's really important to do because obviously once the money's gone, it's not there anymore. If you know an emergency situation came along, hopefully you've budgeted and you've planned like we've said in earlier uh, episodes. But you know, if there's going to be a situation where you needed to get all of your money out of this, you need to know where you're going to get it from and how you're going to get it. Uh, so sometimes that can be quite difficult. Uh, you know, if you've got things like hand-poured silver like this, which is kind of specialist markets, it's going to have high premiums when you bought it. Uh, getting the money that you paid back for these, getting the premiums back, is going to be difficult. It might take time. Uh, otherwise, you might be having to take it down to the local coin store or you know, we buy any gold store and they'll just be giving you basically melt value for it. So you're potentially going to lose out on premiums there. Um, you know, Having specialist coins like this, you're going to lose premiums on that if you sell it quickly. You need to take your time and find the right buyers for that, find collectors who might want to invest their money in that. Um, you know, So that's the advantage of having things like this, which are really nice, simple coins that you can just sell at pretty much any time. Yet you're gonna get probably a little bit under spot if you sell them quickly in an emergency, but um, that's just the way that it goes with this market. But you can better protect yourself because you've paid less premium to buy them and you're losing less premium when you sell them. So the premium is really what makes you the money in this market. Now, some of these coins will end up being um, higher premium as time goes on because obviously certain things are more desirable, uh, certain years become more desirable, collectors will want to, you know, if somebody's, I've got here some 2015 American Eagle, so if somebody's been collecting them but they forgot to buy them that year, then in 10 years time a 2015 Eagle might have a decent premium on it. So you've got to think about these things in advance as well, um, potentially certain things do better than others. So having that kind of emergency budget in place should, hope, should hopefully shield you from you know, having to use emergency exit strategies uh, over time, but at the same time it's always good to have them in place. Now even if you've got a, um, you know, a, a basically an inheritance style strategy where you're buying this to give to your children and grandchildren, it's always good to have them in the back of your mind so that you know how to get the funds if needed. Um, and certainly in the short term I think it's really important so that you know that if, um, if you wanted to sort of do this as a flipping business and sell these, you know how you're going to do it. Uh, you know, know your dealers, get to know your dealers, make sure your dealers get to know you as well. Reputation is really important. You know, if you've got a, a good reputation in the market for having, um, you know, good things, uh, then they will be more likely to buy your stuff off you in potentially more volume and also potentially at little better prices as well. So um, reputation is key, important. I'd say as well, get uh, on the forums, get social media going so that you know uh, people out there in the community. Uh, you know, if you're got a good re reputation in the community, that can be worth many, many pounds and dollars in its premiums when you look to come to sell things in the future. So yeah, that's uh, kind of everything really. Uh, you know, I haven't talked on um, eBay, so selling through eBay, that's one way to do it and that's a lot of people's kind of exit strategy that they have in place. eBay is a great place to buy and sell gold and silver, but it's not without its risks. I'm not gonna go into too much more detail now. Uh, it could be an entire topic of, an, of a video. I could ramble on about eBay for 10, 15, 20 minutes, but I'm not going to. So uh, there will be potentially talking about eBay in the future, but for right now, just know it's got risks, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So that's about it for this week's episode. Um, if you have any comments on this, then please do let me know. Put them in this video as well. Uh, next week, we're going to actually talk about you know, taking delivery of your coins, what you're going to be looking at, how you're going to know that they're real, um, all of the best ways to kind of protect yourself as an investor and as a stacker. We're also going to talk about record keeping, how you actually, uh, you know, basically keep your coins in your mind, in your, you know, Excel spreadsheet or wherever it may be. Um, and we're also going to talk about storage and all of the different options that there might be out there. So if you like this video, please put a thumbs up on it, share it around YouTube, that would be very helpful. And if you've got any social media, sharing it through there would be great as well. Make sure that you go and check out my website, backyardbullion.com, and you can see all of the updates on my hand-poured silver, like these, uh, new pieces like this as well. And you can sign up for my newsletter. The link's in the description below, but you can also go through to my website and sign up through there. Otherwise, I just want to say a massive thank you to you all for watching, and please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.